This is secondary ignition test we're going to be doing. We're going to be using a case study that includes secondary ignition along with mode 6 and some other things. Where we see fitting into a diagnostic scheme with this is after you have done your fuel pressure checks, after you've done your scan data analysis, and you've checked your codes, and you need to get some more in-depth information about why the vehicle has a misfire, either it has a code or no code, this is where you go. Now, this program is part of our misfire diagnostics. It even backs it up a step further and tells you to go back and study all the clues that are stored in the trips and other stuff of OBD2. So the total misfire course is going to be big enough to include all the things to help you verify a repair has been effective and to see how long a problem has been present. So utilize the total course, but this will give you a good start on secondary ignition analysis using a digital storage scope. We're going to start our case study exactly where you would, interviewing the customer. Now, in truth, we didn't get to a direct interview here, but we heard what they said secondhand, which is what most technicians do. The customer just simply stated the vehicle drives bad. And a test drive revealed that there is an engine miss. But there's no mill illuminated. So we have a motivated customer. We also have a cheap customer. It's the same song you've heard before. Single mom, only vehicle she's got, she needs to have it. It's a very realistic situation. We need to solve this as inexpensively as we can has been the request from the customer. We're going to honor that request and show you some things we're going to do to go a little beyond there to give ourselves some protection from doing an inexpensive repair. We looked at scan data. Good starting spot. There's no codes. The scan data, the only thing we find is long-term fuel trim is up to plus 9%. Now, we say on a vehicle like this, we like to see it under 10, and it just barely made it under 10. But one of the things we also tell you about specs, when you got something hanging on the better edge, well, let's see what we got. Where would you start? What would you do? You have all the information you're going to have about this vehicle. We've driven it. We've got no codes. Scan data looks normal. We all start by checking codes, and they're not there. We looked at Here's our scan tool. We hooked it up. No pending codes. Nothing even holding out, fixing to show up. So what we did next, since this is a Ford, we went to mode 6. Now in Ford mode 6, we've got a bunch of misfired TIDs identified down here, and one of them is red. Now that's a good thing. This TID 56, SID 00, is way over spec. Well, Recently, Ford clarified somewhat that 56 is sort of crankshaft pickup signal error count. A, ten, a TID 56 failure can block misfire monitors, and we've seen this noise on some crank signals when this fails. Some of the cars we've seen this on where it's exceptionally high, one in particular was a truck that had a loose harmonic balancer and caused a lot of noise, and it could not count misfires. But this is the 1,000 rev counter here. We have another one, TID 54. TID 54 is the 200 rev counter. This can indicate, this indicates we can count for a short 200 rev count on the misfires. We, they didn't go over it. And the limited amount of time we can count gives us some misfire data. So the 200 misfire rev counter is done for excessive misfires. We didn't fail that. But in the short time of counting, we noticed a small misfire on cylinder number three. How do I know it's cylinder number three? Well, TID 53 is misfire counters. The SID, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, are the eight cylinders on the vehicle. So this is number five, which makes it cylinder number five. It has some misfires. And these happen in 200 revolutions because the other counter is maxed out. We also have some other problems. Now, the customer asked us to do an inexpensive repair, do this as economically as possible. 
Well, we want to honor the customer's commitment, but we also want to tell them they've got an EVAP problem pending up here. If we fix this misfire, it's possible you could get an EVAP code coming back later. And you've got a DPFE or an EGR problem. We need to go investigate these two things to make sure they're nothing that's going to affect our misfire that we're working on. But at the least, we're going to verify that it's not going to be a problem, and then we're going to inform the customer. Have your service advisor tell the customer, we're on the way to fixing the misfire. We found some things in the EVAP. We found some things in the EGR system. Do you want to go ahead and fix those now, or do you want to wait until they turn the tech check engine light on? You've asked us to do an economical repair. But we've got to alert you. You've got two pending problems that may not be corrected when we fix the misfire. What we've just done is shifted responsibility for these two red areas to the customer, the motorist. And then we like to tell people, go ahead and tell the customer, listen, if the check engine light comes on sometime in the future after we finish fixing this, bring it back to us because we've got this data that will help us hone in on the problem. And it'll save you that $85 diagnostic charge. And, and don't believe that these people who give you free scan data analysis at the local parts store can give you accurate diagnostic information. We already have data, so you can bring it back to us. So TID 54, let's look at that. We'll start where you will. The misfire for cell number five needs to be found. That's a fact. And the DPFE and, e and EVAP needs testing as well. We're only going to spend enough time on this if the customer don't repair it to make sure we don't indicate some kind of EGR problem that could be causing misfires. Then we're going to leave it in the customer's forte. We've checked scan data again to make sure there's nothing there. We've checked fuel delivery. We've done, well, these are other things we could be doing. You want to go back and do a pressure drop? We've done fuel pressure. Do a current ramping. Do you want to do engine mechanical? What do you want to do? We've got something here we know is wrong. The scan data didn't give us any clear pictures. You can go back and look at it a second time. You can go back and redo fuel pressure and delivery. You can look at injector pressure drop. You can current ramp the injectors in DIS module. You can do engine mechanical. All these are viable. What we're going to do is we're going to start with secondary ignition, and we think that's an important place to start. So we're going to start our secondary analysis at this point because we've done all the things we could that are easy and necessary. Now it's time to get a little more advanced in the diagnosis.